In this video, uh, we will talk about uh, a few commercial examples to uh, finish off with uh, our, our lecture on uh, fabrication, on advanced or industrial fabrication. Uh, we talk about uh, some examples from the diagnostic market, immunoassays and nucleic acid amplification tests. Um, these are excellent examples for, uh, for lab on a chip devices, but um, they also represent the technology that is used uh, in, in other uh, application areas. So uh, first, what's an immunoassay? An immunoassay is a biochemical test that measures the presence or the concentration of a certain molecule in a solution by using an antibody antigen reaction and that's uh, something that you you definitely need to remember so when you buy a covid test in the pharmacy i hope this will become irrelevant in a few years but uh, now everyone knows what it means um, then most of the time you buy this type of test why i talk about these two reactions is because it hits close to home i work in this field so it's uh, quite easy to to talk about this um, and uh, how it's done is usually there is a primary antibody bound uh, to your surface to which the antigen uh, binds and then how you visualize your uh, result is that you have a secondary uh, antibody which is labeled with a certain molecule and that is what uh, you can optically visualize can be a fluorescent marker can be another type of, uh, of marker, for instance, uh, a gold nanoparticle in the case of lateral flow assays. In any case, what you need to remember is antibody is what your body produces and antigen is what excites your immune system. So uh, your uh, immune system recognizes uh, these uh, harmful uh, organisms, can be bacteria, virus, parasites uh, of other type. Um, these antibodies will bind to them and tell the immune system this is what you need to attack and then the immune system uh, goes into action and destroys the invader but to perform an immunoassay you already need an immune response that exists otherwise you will not get uh, anything uh, for antibody tests for antigen tests it's the reverse and uh, in that case, your uh, system detects the, the presence of the virus or bacterium that you want to detect. But uh, uh, that, is, that is also a different type of sandwich. So uh, when we talk about these sandwiches in the case of an antigen test, you have the antibody bound to the surface and the antigen bounds to that. And then another, another antibody that uh, will... Um, uh, signalize. So to build an immune response there is a, an incubation time of a few days to few weeks typically until your uh, immune system starts reacting and you start uh, getting symptoms and if we talk about an infectious disease then uh, that's a lot of time. During that time person can still infect. Nucleic acid amplification. By nucleic acid you mean both uh, DNA and RNA. Uh, they are characteristic of the organism itself, the parasite itself. It is a molecular technique that can detect uh, a target pathogen in a specimen, typically a bodily fluid, by amplifying the concentration of its nucleic acid. This is the gold standard currently for detecting living organisms. It is used uh, not just in diagnostics, but uh, also in the food industry to uh, detect uh, fakes, for instance. It's uh, fast and very sensitive and very specific. Uh, and uh, there are various uh, reactions, but uh, typically how it goes is uh, you have uh, specific primer uh, sequences that are designed to match the widest uh, selection of your target organism, of the DNA or RNA of your target organism. These primers bind 
to your uh, target and uh, then a molecule called the polymerase will uh, transcribe um, a copy of uh, the DNA sequence and thereby now you have two and then you have four and then eight and then so on. So there's an exponential increase of uh, your uh, target sequences by uh, this kind of uh, polymerase chain reaction. The first example that I have for you, if we go with the scale of uh, what I introduced in a previous video of uh, traditional benchtop, desktop flow chemistry to uh, true lab on a chip type device, the first example is somewhere here between uh, traditional flow chemistry because it's a benchtop instrument and the uh, cartridge bus uh, reader system because it does have a microfluidic uh, system inside. And this is a special kind of microfluidic system that you will have uh, in the next, in the next uh, or one of the next lectures. It works with digital microfluidics where you have a, a two-plate system, uh, electrodes on both. These electrodes are selectively uh, biased with the driving voltage. And as you do that, your liquid is pulled by the changing electrostatic forces um, in the direction that you want. And with this, you can do several reactions in parallel on an electrode array, two-dimensional array. The advantage being that uh, you can reprogram this uh, array to perform uh, something similar to what a liquid handling robot does. So it can go in all different ways that uh, you want to realize in your protocol. Anyway, they use a printed circuit board, so it's fairly cheap on the technology level. Uh, rather than microfabrication, it's a PCB. And uh, this setup performs next generation sequencing to uh, make DNA libraries. So, yeah, you can uh, perform a genome library. And, uh, okay, that's the good news. The, the bad news is that uh, this product is not sold anymore. There was, maybe it's an issue of profitability, maybe it's an issue of uh, something else, but uh, however many advantages digital microfluidics may have, and uh, we talk about uh, this in the lecture of actuators, um, it still hasn't broken the market barrier for some reason. But you can check out a few videos to gain more information about uh, this system. Uh, this is another example, the M-chip. Uh, and now we are in the cartridge plus re reader type of instrumentation. You have already seen this one. I don't know if you have recognized it, but I have already shown you this chip and uh, the handheld reader unit also. It's an injection molded plastic chip with uh, immobilized reagents and, uh, and uh, with various uh, microchannels for uh, uh, reaction and for waste storage. And uh, these are the, the zones where the reagents are uh, immobilized. It's a portable, the demonstration of this uh, chip is a, a portable HIV uh, blood test which uh, uses enzyme-linked uh, immunosorbent uh, assay. It is an immunoassay uh, and, uh, and it works from blood. And the output is uh, a digitized optical readout. So um, on this waste pad uh, you can capture your uh, uh, sample and the reagent and uh, then you can read the, the zones where you have the different reagents or, or in this case probably they have four zones to have a redundancy for the readout but in any case uh, whatever your reaction can be uh, can it be a color change or can it be a fluorescent type of readout or is it just a, a simple optical readout, such as with pregnancy tests? It can be done with a camera, or it can be done with a, an LED photodiode uh, type setup. Um, in any case, it is optical. And um, it only takes 20 minutes to perform this, and it can be done on the site, the, that, uh, or at the point of care, where, uh, where, uh, where 
can be a, a small clinic in a rural area or it can be uh, also in the field. Uh, so this was uh, tested in, uh, in a developing country where uh, in those areas uh, healthcare is not so readily available. And uh, so they did HIV testing there with uh, such a portable instrument. Problem with the immunoassay is that uh, with HIV it requires quite a lot of time to present an immune response. And uh, but this device, it's uh, quite interesting because it is lever or lever lever driven. Uh, so you have this uh, lever that you can pull, and by that uh, actuate the liquids inside your uh, microchannel. So it's uh, vacuum driven uh, and you generate the vacuum by uh, pulling the lever. Then um, uh, the signal detection is realized by an LED photodiode setup. So you illuminate your uh, readout zones and then uh, you get the signals uh, or get um, the transmitted uh, amount of light uh, in a, in a photodiode and uh, convert it to a digital signal and then process it and uh, calculate the result based on that. And then for communication, this device uh, uses a GSM uh, system. So it uh, just uses a mobile network and uh, sends an SMS with the result and GPS coordinates to a central database. It's also quite small, so entirely possible to hold in your hand. It runs from uh, a 9 volt uh, battery, so it's uh, completely portable. And the cartridges themselves uh, are quite uh, cheap. And uh, here is um, a comparison from, uh, from the original paper where, uh, where they showed uh, the results. So this is the system. This uh, um, Portable reader looks like that. You can load uh, the chip through this port and this lever is what uh, drives the fluidics. It has a screen where it shows the result in GPS coordinates and then you just have to push the button to make the readout and do the transmission and then results are received uh, through the mobile network somewhere else. This is a quite an old example but a very good one. And they also have a comparison of uh, a benchtop uh, ELISA test uh, to, the, uh, to this M-chip. Interesting thing is uh, they also have a rapid test, which is just a regular paper strip type test that you can get in the pharmacy. Um, the cost per test is comparable between uh, the benchtop test and uh, this M-chip. However, the required reagent volume is significantly lower for this Labona chip type uh, device, which uh, I mentioned during the introductory lecture. This is one of the main advantages uh, to, to microfluidics. Sample volume required is also significantly smaller, so you don't need to draw venal or venous blood but instead you just need to prick the finger of your uh, person. Uh, the device cost is also significantly lower and it does not require uh, trained personnel to perform it. You can just give them a set of instructions, do this, do that, do that, and anyone can do it. So I believe that uh, this helps to understand what the benefits can be of uh, lab on a chip technology. It's also significantly faster than uh, traditional benchtop uh, ELISA tests. Uh, however, the throughput is also significantly lower. So yes, you can perform a test faster, but you cannot perform nearly as many tests in parallel as a benchtop instrument could. So um, uh, this one is uh, your typical uh, uh, benchtop reader or uh, benchtop instrument plus. Uh, microfluidic cartridge type uh, setup. It's a Perkin Elmer lab chip uh, and it has uh, a plastic microfluidic chip in which uh, 
the reaction is performed. This increases uh, the throughput. These are likely disposable cartridges. And by the looks of it, uh, either injection molded or hot embossed. So low cost consumables uh, thrown away for every new sample. And what they can do with this product is a capillary electrophoresis for DNA RNA quantification. What goes in is a free DNA in liquid and what comes out is your uh, uh, digital readout of uh, a quantified uh, amount of DNA inside. The assay time is extremely short, it's uh, 30 seconds to get the result and you can check out the product here. So what this device has inside uh, is a lot of different things but uh, most importantly it has a way of uh, inputting your uh, reagents and the solutions. Reagents can also be immobilized on the microfluidic cartridge so that uh, it doesn't need to be loaded into the instrument. You just load the cartridge and be done with it. It also has a most likely a fluorescent uh, reader inside built in and, uh, and has the, the pumping mechanism to operate uh, the liquid handling on the chip. Although not much uh, of a description is available, this much uh, we can guess just by looking at it. Um, this is another setup. Uh, now the reader is handheld and you can have uh, various cartridges in which um, you have, uh, in this case, electrochemical sensors and uh, the, the fluidic system. And most likely it has also uh, uh, immobilized reagents inside but uh, some of these systems have uh, uh, reagents that you need to add uh, to your uh, sample and uh, to your cartridge to make it work. In any case it has a handheld single type of handheld reader and multiple cartridges that, uh, that you can use to detect various uh, targets. The chip itself is uh, injection molded plastic with uh, a PCB inside for the electrical, uh, for the electrochemical readout. And uh, the ones, the examples that, uh, that, that they have on the internet, they work with blood and uh, they have electrochemical readouts for various targets. And the assay itself takes two to three minutes. This handheld reader uh, connects wirelessly to the hospital network and, uh, and sends the readouts or the results and these are links that uh, you can check out to get more information about this system. Unfortunately with all of these commercial devices the, the insides are really scarcely uh, uh, discussed so I'm not really able to show you what's on the inside just to uh, give you an idea of what might be inside. Uh, this one, however, is uh, from research, so you can also see what's inside. Um, it's the so-called Simbus chip. It's a true Labona chip type device, and it doesn't need any instrumentation whatsoever. This is a publication from 2010. I have not yet seen any commercial product, but that doesn't mean it is uh, not existing. It's just that I have not seen it yet. Um, it is self-powered. And uh, it is for blood analysis. It is a PDMS glass chip. If you recall, I said before that uh, PDMS is permeable to gas. So that also means if you vacuum it out, then uh, you can create negative pressure uh, to, to suck in uh, liquids. So you vacuum out uh, your PDMS uh, glass chip. You package it in, uh, in a sealed uh, pouch. And when you open it up, you can place your sample in the inlet port and it will be sucked inside. And in this case, uh, there is whole blood analysis performed on the chip. So there is a plasma uh, extraction uh, chamber. And uh, then there are various uh, sites for, uh, for detecting uh, uh, the different cell types in, uh, in blood or detecting uh, uh, pathogens in blood. It's, uh, it's uh, the article that I'm referring to here was uh, just a demonstration. It works with a very small amount of sample, five microliters, 
uh, it is portable it does not require any instrumentation but uh, you can have an optical reader for a, for a colorimetry uh, readout it, uh, me it means that uh, there is a color change uh, upon the reaction and you can detect various biomarkers inside your uh, sample uh, so you need no tubes in this case you just need to deposit your sample with a with a pipette um, onto the the chip and this is the link where you can get additional information this one i'm very familiar with but i'm not able to show you the insights because of uh, uh, intellectual property reasons and this is the device that uh, i myself have worked on uh, it's the multi-test of uh, sub-diagnostics it is not the only one anymore on the market but it is a true lab on a chip type device where there is a microfluidic cartridge on the inside which is uh, a plastic one and the whole device is made of plastic and uh, in this cartridge you can perform a rapid diagnostic test to detect uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea and uh, the sensitivity and, uh, and selectivity or a specificity uh, parameters are on par with uh, clinical diagnostics it, it is it uh, performs isothermal uh, DNA amplification and uh, it is non instrumented you don't need anything else than what's in the box and you can get the results and if you get the results with this one you can be bloody sure that uh, you are negative if it gives you a negative if it's positive you can be bloody sure that it is positive so you don't have to go and get retested as, as you would with, a, with an antigen, antibody kind of test. And uh, similar to what I spoke about, but from a different company, first uh, FDA emergency use approved uh, COVID-19 handheld PCR test. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, it is very similar to, uh, to what I talked to you about in this case is the Lucera uh, check it easy and uh, it is um, a device which uh, which fits in your hand there is a, a sample input container into which you must put a nasal swab and uh, inside this you have uh, some liquid reagents to open up the cells and uh, get the free uh, viral uh, RNA or uh, to uh, to to yeah to to open up the cells and get the free viral dna um, and then uh, below that there is a membrane which uh, you can pierce by inserting it into the device and inside is a microfluidic cartridge a small one with uh, several channels each of them having uh, 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 reagent pellets lyophilized reagent pellets and this uh, mixture of uh, your liquid buffer uh, lyophilizing agents or, or uh, lysing agents and uh, so on interact with uh, the reagent pellets and uh, um, they are heated up inside this device so we have uh, some electronics underneath that uh, that heat them up because for uh, nucleic acid uh, amplification you need heat it is also an isothermal amplification test so you maintain a single temperature unlike with PCR you don't need to cycle the temperatures there's only one temperature range maintained and it finishes really fast because of the several chambers that it has it has uh, six of them performs uh, multiple reactions in parallel and uh, probably averages them out they claim on the website that after 11 minutes uh, you can already get the positive and the negative will take 30 minutes so um, quite amazing uh, uh, statements uh, difficult to say how true they are probably they have to be if uh, they got approved uh, the detection although they don't specifically state it anywhere by digging into the patents most likely it is colorimetry and uh, you get the indication through uh, leds as to what the result is and you can get more information through these links so just to drive the message home this is a true lab on a chip type device where 
you can detect COVID with the very same method that they use in uh, clinical laboratories, but this you can do at home. It currently costs uh, 70 euros, so quite expensive, but you, you can do it yourself. So all you need is a one pager of instructions and the device, and you can perform it at home yourself. So it's quite uh, simple. And after use, you can throw it away. So in this uh, uh, video, I talked to you about uh, commercial examples of, uh, of uh, some microfluidic lab on a chip uh, devices that, uh, that ties into uh, the lecture of today, where we talked about industrial scale uh, fabrication methods. And uh, I mentioned immunoassays and nucleic acid amplification tests. And I hope you noticed that all of these use plastics. There was no mention of glass and no mention of silicon. It is very rare uh, in, uh, in, in lab on a chip to have that type of, uh, of system. Silicon glass are only used for really specific high, high uh, temperature, high chemical um, uh, resistance or, uh, or high pressure tolerance and the applications that need these features. Thank <music> you.